Hey guys, my name is Jesse Mew, and welcome to Nish, a genetic survival game. This is a super early build that I received from backing it during their Kickstarter campaign, and I have literally been playing this from the moment that they dropped the key into my inbox. Basically, the idea is to create this unique and thriving pack of creatures by helping them adapt to their environment through genetics. You can breed certain mutations that will give your creatures buffs or change their appearance, and honestly, it is just so much fun. It's adorable, of course, and really immersive in a way that I didn't fully expect. So I'm so excited to share this with you guys today. This right here is our starting pair of creatures. This is Adam and this is Eve, of course. And if you take a look down here, you can see the sort of genetics that they're starting with. So Adam here with his big fangs <laughs> has three points in the speed skill, which basically determines how far he can move on these little tiles in one direction. He only has one one point in collecting, which means that he can't gather uh, many berries from these bushes. He can only gather one per turn. He has two points in strength, which means that when he's battling any carnivores in this big grass over here, he'll be able to deal two points of damage per attack. And he also has venom in him and those big fangs of his, so he'll be able to poison any, any attackers as well. So he's definitely a good one to choose if we need to be fighting anyone. But um, a little Eve over here has five points in the speed skill, and she also has two points in collecting. So what we're going to want to do with her is make sure that she comes over here to these berry bushes and gathers up food for us because she'll be able to gather them at a faster rate. She only has one point in strength, so she won't be doing much fighting, but they all kind of have their strengths and weaknesses, and as we continue growing our little pack here, as we continue breeding them along, we'll hopefully be bringing these numbers up to create a really uh, unique little creature. So we'll finish uh, gathering her berries over here so we can get our food, because every single interaction, every single move that you make costs one point of food, and if you run out of this food down here, then you're going to find that uh, your creatures are going to starve very quickly. So to start off, I think we're going to uh, breed this pair right here. Since I'm on um, Adam right now, I can click right on Eve's tile and they will have a baby very, very soon. As long as we leave Eve on this little nest right here, then in the next turn, she will be uh, giving birth to a new baby in our little pack. And then in the meantime, we can come over here and peek in this tall grass to kind of like expand our territory. So there we go. We've used up all of our energy for the day, which you can see by these little like gems on their necks. When they're green, that means that they have another move for the day, and when they are grayed out like this, that means that they are uh, currently done. So we can press the space key to progress to the next day and uh, refill our energy, and there's our little baby <laughs> right behind dad, unfortunately. So let's see if we can get in closer. There he is. Oh, so cute. So cute. <laughs> so this is Kuvanku, I believe. Kuvanku, and it looks like um, he's just like dad, judging by his skills. He has four in speed, one in collecting, and a one in strength, so a little bit less powerful than dad, actually. But he has mom's big nose for smelling, and um, it looks like he has normal ears and normal eyes as well. You can go a little bit deeper into this too. If I click on Eve again, we can see um, the dominant and recessive traits that she carries. So the ones that are lit up are the dominant traits that she's currently showing in her appearance right now, like her medium ears and her big nose. The starting pair actually have the same recessive genes as well. You can see the same in um, in Adam right here too. But if we click on the new little baby, you can see that that has uh, actually changed. So their dominant genes are the big nose and the normal body, but he's recessively carrying the big body gene and the poison fangs gene. So it's possible that if this little creature has baby, of his own that he could pass along the poison fangs to one of his offspring. So this is where the game gets like really complicated and so much fun just trying to discover all of the different ways that you can put together these genes. So let's bring little Eve out here. Let's have her go um, right to this square so she can pick up some more berries and maybe peek in more of this grass over here because there's a lot of things that you can discover in this grass. Of course, we're on a big island at the moment. And as far as I can tell, every single island is unique. I've started this game three times so far and every single one has been just a little bit different. So we have a lot to discover in this grass, basically. Now we'll bring Adam over here and I think we'll actually um, breed with Eve again so that we can create yet another little creature over here. We'll have a tiny little band of uh, tigers, hopefully, <laughs> and we'll continue searching in this tall grass in the meantime. The babies can't move as far as the adults, of course, 
um, as they grow, they'll gain the ability to move a little bit more during each day. Like now he has one little point of energy for every day, so we'll move him out of the nest to uh, give Eve the chance to go into the nest after she picks those lovely berries right there, and she'll be able to give birth on the next uh, day again, of course. So let's take a peek in this grass over here. Maybe we'll find something <laughs> and move uh, Adam just a little bit farther away in the meantime as well. Now you can find carnivores in the grass and you can also find um, rogues in the grass too to take into your clan. And there is something right there. Okay, so if we bring Adam over here and take a look in there, it is. <laughs> there is a rogue that we can immediately accept into this pack. Um, you are looking very unique, sir. <laughs> very, very unique. Or actually, ma'am, of course, because she does not have a mane, so she is a girl. Lanasi, maybe? Lanasi? Well, that's what we'll call her. <laughs> I believe she has the spit maw. Is that what they call it? Um, spit snout. So that's why her face looks just a little bit different from the others. Um, it's not the prettiest thing, but it's unique. <laughs> so we'll be able to tell her apart for sure. Um, it looks like she has quite a few different genetics though. This is where it gets uh, very interesting because we're accepting this new creature into our pack with a whole different line of genetics to uh, make sure that all of our little offspring are diverse in their own ways and they won't be uh, getting sick anytime soon. If you inbreed too much in this game, then you can find that uh, this immunity gene might cause you some trouble. If you have two of the same symbols on the end right here, then that means that your creature is more likely to get sick in the future and die off. So we want to make sure that we're finding these new gene pools to bring into our little pack here. So I think what we're going to do is save um, Lanasi <laughs> for one of our little males over here. She will be the mate of uh, one of our little babies. And for now, we'll just bring her over here to uh, help explore the area, I think. So she can take a peek in all of this grass, take a look at this rock over here, and you can continue expanding your territory as well, sir. <laughs> there we go. And I believe I will have Eve come over here and pick some more berries while her little baby comes over here and he can help peek in the grass as well as soon as um, the time ticks over. Oh, there we go, some rain. Rain is actually quite good, although it makes the screen very, very dark. <laughs> the rain makes it so all of the berries grow back on each of the bushes, so Eve can spend her time picking all of this berries, all of these berries off of the bush right here, and her um, little baby can help too. Pick that last berry off the bush. And then we'll take a look and see what's in the grass over here with um, Adam. Oh goodness, of course, it had to be a carnivore. <laughs> These guys are what nightmares are made out of, honestly. So we need to uh, take a peek in this grass so that we can attack him and hope that he's not going to wipe out our little family right here because unfortunately we have all of our babies right over here. So we're going to try to get rid of him as fast as we can. Luckily, Lanasi has uh, quite a good attack strength, so we'll bring her over here to help uh, defend the nest <laughs> as well as she can anyway. And I think we'll bring this little guy right over here next to his brother, Cuckoo. <laughs> his name is Cuckoo. That's so adorable. And this is uh, Kuvanku. So there we go. We need to pass the next day and hope that this guy doesn't uh, kill any of our little pack members. I think we're okay. It doesn't look like either of these guys were damaged, actually. You would be able to see a little red bar right here if they were damaged. So thankfully, this guy decided to uh, skip his turn. <laughs> we lucked out in that way. If I click on him, you can see that his little red bar is filling up. Once it reaches the end right here, once it reaches this uh, white bar, that means that we will have successfully taken him down and we'll be able to uh, harvest his meat. There we go. <laughs> we'll be able to harvest this meat right here for us uh, some more food, which is very helpful because we were actually running quite low. So I think we'll take Eve over here and we'll bring her back to uh, this berry bush so she can get started on that. And uh, the little babies can pick the berries too because it looks like they're uh, doing quite well making sure that we have food as well. So there we go. I believe, uh, oh, this guy has one more little bit of energy to use. You can kind of tell because they follow your uh, cursor if they still have energy to use in the day. Otherwise they keep their heads down just like Eve and Adam back there. So there we go. We can uh, skip on to the next day and see what that has in store for us. So all of these different colored tiles represent different areas of the land too. Like I guess this would be like the grasslands. And I believe this uh, tealish color is the swamp. And if I remember correctly, they said that if you are in a swamp land, then you are more likely to get sick. So we want to keep that in mind too, because uh, we don't want these creatures dying off 
while we're uh, off exploring the land here, but it is definitely a good idea to explore all of this tall grass so you can kind of see what's in the area, what's in your territory. So let's take a peek in there. Um, unfortunately, these little guys aren't fully grown yet, so we won't be able to uh, breed them anytime soon. But we'll just keep exploring this place. I notice that there's still some more rustling grass back there. Now that could be a rabbit or it could be um, a rogue like we found uh, this little guy from. Or it could be yet another carnivore. So who knows what it's going to be. It looks like it's still raining too. The only problem is it makes the screen very, very dark. <laughs> but it does help us out because um, it gives us a lot more food to work with. We get a wonderful harvest so we can move a little bit further. Um, in every single go. So there we go. I think uh, Kuvanku might be fully grown now. So what we're going to do is take him over here and we'll take um, little Lanasi over here as well to breed with each other and then we'll put her on the nest. So she'll be giving birth in the next um, day as that ticks over. And then we'll bring him up here to uh, finish collecting those berries too. We might as well. We don't want to waste a turn. But oh goodness, it looks like I am actually out of food. So we are going to skip ahead to the next day because if we make any more moves, then this poor little Eve is going to start starving, which would not be good. So let's see what we're going to get out of this. Okay, this one has ram horns. Oh my goodness, so she must have had the recessive gene. There we go for ram horns. And she actually passed it down to little Takiru. <laughs> so how cute is that? And it looks like he actually has the recessive gene for blue eyes as well, which is quite interesting. And panda patterns, oh my gosh. <laughs> I would love to have a little panda baby. Actually, I'm not entirely sure what the screen does. I'm not entirely sure how this works just yet, but it seems like if you take a certain mutation and you drop it in one of these little circles right here, then you can kind of prioritize that mutation over the others. So if we drag the panda pattern to 30% and we drag, oh, let's see, maybe um, maybe we want more ram horns, so we'll drop that over here too, then we could possibly have babies that show those specific traits. So we'll see if that works. We'll actually bring um, this guy, this Kavanku, over here to breed with his mate yet again. Oh my goodness, but we are starving. <laughs> I already forgot. Good job, me. Okay, so we'll gather up some more berries before we do that because we don't want our little guys to starve right off the bat. Um, unfortunately, she's taking care of her baby right now, so we have to wait till the next turn anyway. So we'll just bring him up here to peek in this grass right over here. And we'll uh, take a look around here as well, looking for more berry bushes. And it looks like uh, we might be out. So we'll have her collect these berries over here and we'll pass to the next day just so we don't waste all of these little uh, food points over here in the meantime. So now we can bring the baby out. We can bring him over here to hopefully gather up some berries in the future. And then uh, she can gather up these too. So he can come over here, they can breed again. And in the next turn, they will have another baby, hopefully with either ram horns or um, that lovely panda marking. We'll have to see. I have a feeling those are a bit uh, more rare to obtain than others. So we only, again, have two points of uh, food. So we need to keep a very close eye on that. I see that rustling grass over there too. And I'm a little bit concerned that it might be a carnivore. Um, thankfully, it's raining now, and look at that! We do have a little panda ram baby of some sort. <laughs> Anime, I believe her name is. And she has quite a few different genes. Those are interesting. She has um, a no-paw gene, unfortunately, which doesn't really help us. So one of her paws might be crippled, while the other one is a claw. So I'm not sure if she's going to be the best. Yeah, she's, she's not really good at uh, gathering. It looks like she doesn't have the gathering skill at all, which is unfortunate because it means that she will not be able to use any of these uh, berry bushes in the future. So we may want to try to find a way to breed that out of the line as soon as possible. <laughs> but for now, we do need to collect these berries. So we'll just gather up all the berries in the area. Um, I believe, yeah, little Cuckoo is a little bit better at collecting berries than his father is. So we'll use him to collect those. And I think we're going to take Adam down here to check out this rustling grass. Oh my 
my gosh, it's another. <laughs> it's another little creature. Look at you. You have that spit snout again. Um, Lanako, I believe. It almost looks like they could be sisters, honestly. I mean, she has stripes and she has spots, but they kind of have like the same uh, coat colors to them. So that's kind of interesting. It looks like she has the berry paw, though, which is very helpful because that's exactly what I was looking for. The berry paw will help us collect a little bit better. So if we breed her with some of our other creatures, then hopefully that will help us in um, that respect. Hopefully we won't be seeing any more of our babies with uh, the no paw gene. So maybe we'll take her and breed her with this guy up here, Cuckoo. <laughs> and we'll see if they can make a, a group of very high collectors, I suppose you could say. Very apt collectors. And we'll have our little baby over here collect in the meantime as well. Collect all those berries. And you can pick the berries too. We don't want to uh, waste any turns over here when we have so many berries to collect. And I believe that's all for this day, so let's see. Oh my gosh, this guy is so cute. I love the panda markings. <laughs> she is adorable. We're going to move her down here so she can help collect those berries too. And we are going to move you out of the nest so these two can uh, have a baby as well. And we'll see uh, what they produce. It might be something different. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. This group is getting very, very big though, so it's a little bit worrying. Um, we do have a lot of mouths to feed, which makes it a little bit more complicated. Every single move, of course, costs a point of food, so the more that we have, the more food that we need to have as well. So let's take a peek into this little swampland over here too, to make sure that there's no lurking carnivores, I suppose. <laughs> and uh, we'll have her move, move up there so she can take a peek in there as well in the future. There we go, now it's nice and sunny and we can see this gorgeous baby over here. Oh dear, too close, there we go. <laughs> Who has lovely stripes. So there we go, we have um, a stripy little baby just like his grandfather that would actually be. I know in the future, because it was a stretch goal in their Kickstarter campaign, they're planning on putting in a family tree option so you can see who the parents are and who their offspring is, which would make it so much easier to avoid things like inbreeding in the future. So I am really looking forward to uh, that little aspect of the game. And it looks like Van Taduk? Van Taduk <laughs> has um, quite high speed, very high collecting as well. He'll be able to collect three berries at a time, which is excellent. Um, he's not very strong, not very strong, unfortunately, but I'm sure we can fix that in the future. And he has quite a few genes, a very big mix of genes. He carries the big nose trait, so hopefully he'll be able to pass that down to some of his offspring. And he also has that berry paw that I was talking about, so that's very, very good. That is very good to see. Now, it looks like we have more rustling grass over here, so I think I will take a look at that as well. We'll bring little Cuckoo down here. Oh no! <laughs> oh no, I shouldn't have brought Cuckoo down there. Oh no, that is not going to go well. Okay, we need someone with a high strength to come over here. Oh my goodness! Anamim, look at you with five strength. Unfortunately, you are just a little baby, so I don't think I want to bring you over there. But uh, we'll bring, I think, is this your mother over there instead? Like, this is why I need that family tree, guys. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I get so confused. Um, I'm not sure if we can actually get over there. We might need to explore the area so we can kind of like go around him. So we'll take this little baby over here. Oh, there's a rock. That's why. That's why the rock was blocking um, her passage through. And it looks like there's also a little bunny coming out to uh, take a peek in the area to kind of say hi to us. So I guess we're going to have to try to collect some berries in the meantime too because I noticed that we're getting a little bit low and we don't want to uh, run out while we're trying to defend the nest from this awful carnivore. Oh, good, and we actually found another group of berries over here, which is perfect, so Eve can go over there and collect those. And, oh my gosh, uh, the little baby is like the strongest of all of us, which is so funny. So I guess we'll bring her a little bit closer. I don't want her to get picked off by the carnivores, but uh, she would definitely help us in this situation, so this is interesting. I don't really want to bring these two over there since they're so weak. Um, and it looks like Kuvanku was actually already injured in the past, so he actually has a shorter lifespan than the rest of his packmates anyway. And we don't want him dying off anytime soon, so I think we're going to skip ahead and uh, see what happens here. Sometimes it's best when you have low food just to skip ahead, even if you have more energy. It's better than moving just for the sake of moving. Um, so we'll skip ahead here and hope that he doesn't kill anyone. 
Okay, it looks like we're fine. It doesn't look like he attacked Cuckoo, so it looks like we're doing all right. We'll have to uh, find a way around though. Let's see, we can peek in this grass. We can peek in here and now we can get down there and actually attack him. So let's gather up some berries with Eve so we have plenty of moves to make. And um, unfortunately he is out of moves. So, oh my gosh, like I <laughs> feel really bad about moving this little baby over here, but I am very tempted to. Um, I guess you are going to have to um, attack for now. We uh, peeked in that grass, so we have officially revealed you, sir, to the rest of our pack. And you need to kind of like move around here to attack him, unfortunately, through all of the rocks. Of course, this guy picked a very good place to uh, position himself in between all of these rocks, which makes it very hard for our pack to get over there and actually uh, defeat him to defend the nest. Um, we're going to move this little baby out of the nest and I think we're done with breeding for now because we have quite a few mouths to feed. So we'll just bring her over here to collect some more berries and you can do the same. Oh my gosh, that bunny again. <laughs> the bunnies are very tricky because they move along with every single move that you take. So even if I go there, you can see that he kind of like skipped back over here so I can't reach him anymore. So they are very tricky. You kind of just have to keep your eye out and wait for them to move to one of your adjacent uh, little tiles here so you can swipe them before they uh, know what hit them. So I think that's all the moves I'm going to make on this round and let's hope, oh gosh, I definitely saw him uh, slice this poor lady back here. Lanasi definitely got hit. So hopefully we can take this guy down. He does have a lot of health left. Will I use her to, oh my goodness, she's starving too. Oh my goodness, that was not good. <laughs> you gotta keep an eye on that food. I always forget to look at that food. So we'll gather up the berries before we make any more attacks here. Um, and then I think that was all she could do anyway. So we'll have to bring this guy, Adam, down here, who is unfortunately getting very old. Oh my goodness, so the aging in this game. From what I can tell, as every day passes, this white bar grows, and once it reaches the end here, whether it's the red bar that you've gathered over time, like, um, I believe, who was it? This guy got injured, so his lifespan is shorter. Once these two meet, they pass from old age, so it's something that you definitely have to uh, keep an eye out for and it looks like this little bunny wandered a little bit too close so that's very good for us because we can finally grab him and I'll uh, take his meat so now we need to move Adam down here to help protect his clan his little pack here he is a uh, poisonous if I remember correctly venomous so he'll be able to poison this creature and oh my goodness he actually took him out too now the carnivores give us a lot of food so that is going to be very helpful for us as we're uh, struggling to continue on here and oh my gosh the little baby can hunt too. <laughs> we can take out this little bunny with the baby, which is excellent. And I think we'll move um, you back over here so you can gather up this food. And let's see, is there any more food that we can gather? Of course, we could bring her over here to gather up the meat, which would be very good to do. And I guess we should probably keep peeking in the grass here. So this is like the bare bones of what the game is about. There is so much more that you can do in here with all of the different genetics, and there's so much more that they're going to add in the future. I am really excited to see some of the stretch goals that they release become implemented into the game. Like I believe they were going to have uh, streams in here and jungles with their own specific genes. Jeans. They're going to even add wings as a possible mutation, which I am so excited to see. I'm sure it's going to be a ways off before they add it in, but that would be so much fun to try to breed a little pack of flying creatures here. <laughs> so this game is not technically out yet. This is an early access build that I received just from backing them on Kickstarter, but I believe they're planning to release the official early access on Steam sometime in September. So if you're interested in possibly playing this on your own, then definitely take a look at their social media links and uh, follow them there so you'll be able to see when it's ready to be released. And if this is something that you guys enjoyed seeing on the channel, then please do let me know because I would love to continue Nish. This is such a fun game. I absolutely love it. I didn't expect it to be so interesting and complicated with all of these genes. There's so many different ways that we could go here. There's so many different genes that we could try to unlock. So I am really looking forward to playing this more and I hope you guys are too. So thank you guys so much for watching today and I will see you all next time. Bye!